Welcome to Expedition Casts. I'm David Guggenheim, the Ocean Doctor. This is one of the most unknown corners of the Gulf of Mexico, northwestern Cuba, a region little explored, whose mysteries may hold important clues to protecting coral reefs around the world. Cuba's coat of arms bears a key, Llave del Golfo, the key to the Gulf of Mexico, a subtropical nexus where waters of the Caribbean Sea, Gulf of Mexico, and Atlantic Ocean intertwine in a sublime undersea cocktail of diversity, color, and mystery. Cuba's Gulf of Mexico waters have never been comprehensively studied, until now. It's a project called Proyecto Costa Noroccidental, Project of the Northwestern Coast. Notably, it's a collaboration between Cuban and U.S. research institutions, and it's already providing new insights about the marine life that lives there and how best to protect it. The project is also a unique learning opportunity for Cuba's next generation of marine scientists. Nearly 20 students from the University of Havana are participating in this project as part of their master's and doctoral research. Even for marine scientists, politics are unavoidable when Americans and Cubans try to work together. Decades of political differences between Cuba and the United States and the long-standing economic embargo imposed by the U.S. against Cuba have made collaboration with our Cuban colleagues very challenging. Fortunately, we are persistent, and once we're past the red tape and out on the water together, we make a truly incredible team. It's been very exciting to be part of a project that is assembling the very first detailed maps of the underwater ecosystems of Cuba's Gulf of Mexico waters. But it's been even more exciting to see Cuba's coral reefs firsthand. Many of the reefs I've seen here are spectacular. They're healthy, they're colorful. It's like rolling back the clock 35 years to the very first time I dove on a coral reef as a young teenager. That was just 90 miles north of here in the Florida Keys. Sadly, nearly half the reef I saw there has since died, and reefs have been dying throughout the Caribbean. Why are the reefs here in Cuba still so healthy? That's one of the key questions we hope our research will answer. There are theories. Cuba's coastline is very well preserved compared to other places in the Gulf and Caribbean. Cuba's use of fertilizers and pesticides has dropped dramatically since the withdrawal of the Soviet Union in the early 90s. Pollution from fertilizers, nutrient pollution, is well known to cause rapid algae growth, which, if unchecked, can smother entire coral reefs. Many fish that live in and around coral reefs eat that algae, so they're a natural control, keeping the reefs clean and healthy. But overfishing has depleted many reef fish around the Caribbean, and it's believed this is hurting the health of coral reefs. Cuba's commercial fishing fleet uses primarily hook and line, rather than nets and trawls, so its impact is believed to be less and more targeted on a few species than in other regions. I've come to appreciate that in countless ways, the island of Cuba is unique, and when it comes to coral reefs, Cuba is again unique. Here, an island of thriving corals flourishes amid a world of corals dying and disappearing. Here in this mysterious corner of the Gulf of Mexico, where it sometimes seems that time has stopped, I find hope. I have hope that the rich ecosystems of this beautiful island will endure. And I have hope that Cuba's coral reefs might share some of their tantalizing secrets with us. Secrets that can offer clues to protecting and restoring coral reefs elsewhere, including that special place in the Florida Keys where I first beheld a coral reef, just 90 miles to the north.